Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Well, welcome to Getting to Know You. Today we're going to be talking to Wendy Birch. She's the executive director of the Tenbrook Mansion. So welcome, Wendy. This is your second visit here. You've been here before. Yep. Um, why don't you, before we get going, um, you just give us the capsule, his, not the capsule history, the capsule history of, or a summary of the Tenbrook Mansion, what it is, you know, you know why it's down there, and you know, just give us the caps. And then we have a lot of events to talk about. Sure, sure. Um, the Tenbrook Mansion is the headquarters of the Albany County Historical Association. Um, it was built in 1798 by Brigadier General Abraham Tenbrook, um, who was a general during the Revolutionary War. Um, and uh, later on, it was the home of the Alcott family, um, who were very influential during the 19th century and early 20th century. They um, were um, presidents of the um, Mechanics and Farmers Bank of okay. Albany. Yep. So and then so the house, I guess General was he a General Tenbrook? Yes, was he was. Mm -hmm. And then another there, there is some history there. His wife, not his wife. So, what's the relationship with Alexander Hamilton? I'm trying to remember now. Well, um, um, Abraham Tenbrook's one of his daughters, oh, okay, one of his daughters was sorry. married to one of General Schuyler's sons. And one of General Schuyler's uh, daughters was married to Alexander okay. Hamilton. I knew yeah. there was something, something there. All right. Mm -hmm. So, and then in 19, I guess you're saying in 1948, the Alcott family turned it over to the you got, Albany County Historical Association. Yep. So since the 40s, what kind of, um, you know, like, what is sort of the purpose of it? What do people do when they come down there? Why, do, why is it run? What, you know, why do you... Sure. Um, well, the Albany County Historical Association, our mission is to preserve, promote, and present Albany history. And the Tenbrook Mansion is kind of one of our, our big showcases. Um, we do operate it as a historic house museum, so we are open for tours. Um, and we hold a lot of events there, um, mainly to, you know, promote educational outreach mm -hmm. um, within the, the county. Well, I notice a lot of your events um, are for, with kids so that they can learn about history and archaeology and everything. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's, so let's see. Now, this show is going to be on many times during the spring and into the summer. We have a lot of events here from April right up to July. So we'll just talk about some of these, and then um, people can maybe go on to go down there or join or or whatever. Sure, or, we would love people to join. <laughs> now, the um, first thing coming up on April 17th, 6 p.m., it's called Murder Mystery Night at the Tenbrook Mansion. I think this is one of those, well, I've never been to one, so what, why don't you explain what this is? Sure. Um, O'Connor Murder Oh, O'Connor Murder by Design uh, are basically uh, donating this. So, so it's sort of a fundraiser, but it's also going to be um, um, based in history. And um, they're actually, um, Stephen O'Connor is uh, involved with the Knickerbocker Mansion. He actually lives here in Colony. And um, they've tailored a lot of these murder mystery nights for different nonprofit organizations. Uh, the one that they're doing uh, at the Tenbrook Mansion is going to um, center around the Alcott family and uh, a reception there and apparently someone's going to be murdered. So people, people come to this, mm -hmm. and then it's, it's, I don't want to say it's acted out, but people have to you, sort of guess what... Uh, my understanding <laughs> is you, you mingle with the different characters yeah. that are at the party, and then um, you get different bits of information that will help you solve the mystery at, uh, at the end of the evening. And then is there a... A dinner or anything? It'll be a reception. <laughs> we're we're going to try and have some, um, you know, substantial hors d'oeuvres and some baked goods. It's not going to be a sit down dinner. Now, now, how many people are in are with these murder by design? Are they? Is the, they I, have a whole troop of people. Or? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then, mm -hmm. are there any? like famous historical people? I'm not the, sure how, who he's going to... I know that, um, you know, Thomas Alcott's going to be right. there within his wife and some of his children. I'm not sure what other historical figures, but, you know, Thomas Alcott was very friendly with Martin Van Buren, okay. so he may make an appearance. So, and are the people dressed in um, period costumes? Yes, yes. So the gist is people, 
you talk to him and then it, what, everyone gets together and you try to guess? I think what happens is... I mean, is there going to be a body found or something? I, I sus <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I suspect someone might be poisoned, okay. perhaps. Right. And uh, so we'll have to figure out who the murderer okay. is. Okay, and then based on what people can gather. Mm -hmm. All right, because I, I know these things are very popular. I didn't yeah. know that they um, tailored them to, to, to history mm -hmm. things. Well, that's, that'll be on April 17th at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it's fifty dollars a person. Forty if you're a member. Mm -hmm. Now this is um, limited to forty people. So yeah. So we're taking reservations okay. for it. And it's if you just go to Google, type in Tenbrook Mansion or tenbrookmansion.org. You can. There's all kinds of information there. A lot of the stuff we're talking about today. So now coming up on April 24th at 10 a.m. Is that a Saturday? I'm pretty it sure. is. Yep. Okay, we have here, we ha you're having Volunteer Day. Now, what's, what's that all That's about? That's just something, you know, anyone who's interested in being a volunteer is more than welcome to come. Um, you don't have to be a member or anything. You, you don't have to be a member to be a volunteer. Um, but that's just to plan out um, who's going to be at our different events helping out. You know, we really depend on our volunteers. Mm -hmm. We do not have a lot of money um, at the Tenbrook Mansion. So um, volunteers are just essential to um, performing our mission um, and one of the the biggest things that we need are our docents to lead the tours you know I'm kind of the main tour guide there mm -hmm. and as much as I love the mansion I'm always willing to uh, you know encourage other people to come and learn about it and 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 provide the tours to visitors how many volunteers do you have um, we probably have somewhere between 50 and 100 volunteers oh, wow. you know some are more dedicated than others okay. <laughs> Well, I know if you go to the website and you can click on the different rooms, you can see pictures. I think um, I think I had something here. What was it? You can see the parlors, the bedroom, the halls. Mm -hmm. the, um, it's really beautiful. Um, so they're so nice in the pictures. And maybe you know, if you watch, if you see the picture, you might want to go down and um, mm -hmm. see that. So if you want to take a tour of the Tenbrook Mansion, I think you were telling me there's two ways to go about it. You're only open. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but people can go on other days. Why don't you tell us sure. how people can, if they want to take a tour, what they have to, sure. what they have to um, do. Sure. After, you know, May 2nd is Living History Day. That's our big opening day. And after May 2nd, we're open for tours um, Thursdays and Fridays from 10 to 4. And that anyone can just come, walk in right. and come down? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Saturdays and Sundays from 1 to 4. Okay. Um, however, if that's not convenient for you, if someone just calls ahead of time and, and sort of makes an appointment or to let, you know, to let us know when they're available, mm -hmm. we can usually accommodate you. Um, so, you know, definitely give us a call, set up a time. We've got beautiful gardens, too, so we can usually take people through the gardens as well as the house. So they can just call and make, sort of make an appointment? or So you're down there five days a week. Or, wait, I shouldn't say five. You're open. I, yeah. I'm there pretty a, a lot of the time. <laughs> um, but uh, my, my general work out, you know, Monday through Friday, I'm there by 9 okay. o'clock so in the morning. So and, people can, yeah. can go, go do it that way. Now, you just mentioned your opening day is May 2nd. Mm -hmm. You're calling it, it's called Living History Day. Um, what goes on? It looks like you're having a lot of events that day. Yeah, um, Living, Living History Day is our big opening day. We've been doing it now for many, many years. Um, and we have historical reenactors that are on the grounds. Uh, there are pony rides and a petting zoo for, for kids. It's very kid-friendly. Um, free tours of the mansion. Um, and uh, we also, you know, we do it the same day that uh, Historic Cherry Hill does a history fair the same day. So, um, you know, we kind of try and get, you know, people to come to both events. So usually, I'm looking at the things here, usually you have to pay to take a tour. It's, um, it's what's it? Five dollars a person. Five dollars a person. But I, if you go down to Living History Day, you can get a free tour. Is That's that what right. you're saying? Is yep. that, so is everything free that day or? Uh, for the most part, okay. I mean, we'll be selling food, but uh, other than that, yep, pretty much right, everything so is free. And save money on, on that day. <laughs> yeah, we've got some kids coming from the Albany School of the Humanities. The show choir is going to mm -hmm. be singing that day. We've got a couple other musical acts that will probably be playing. Um, All some right, so that sounds like a full day. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. May 2nd. Um, and when you say you have reenactors, is that what um, we've military got or just? Some military. We've right. got um, some ladies coming that are going to have an open, you know, pit cooking fire that they're going to show how they used to bake back then over an open fire. And we've got a buffalo soldier okay. that's coming, um, some Native Americans, so a lot of different, uh, different uh, reenactors from all different periods of history. Not, oh, not just, not just colonial. No, nope, oh, not okay. just colonial. We've got, in fact, there'll be some, the Civil War roundtable will be there. Okay. Um, a lot of Civil War reenactors. And, and then do they sort of, 
I know I've been through these things. They, they kind of stay in character. And you can yeah, and they'll set up a display. Ask what it was like. You can, <laughs> exactly, yep. <laughs> to be a Buffalo soldier or whatever. Yep. Oh, okay, and then you got music, refreshments, different exhibits, pony rides, mm -hmm. and a petting zoo. Yep. And more, it says. So yes. very good. Um, so that's is that, that's a Saturday, I, I assume. It's a Sunday, actually. Oh, Sunday. Sunday, yep. May 2nd. Yep. For the opening day at the Tenbrook Mansion. It's called Living History Day, and as I just said, all kinds of goings on, and you can get a free tour if you don't want to <laughs> go during the week and pay. <laughs> now, um, <clears throat> um, on May 7th, from 5 to 9, you're having a thing called synth Synthesis. Yeah, and It's I actually part three of, mm -hmm. it's going to be there the whole month of May, and the other two were there March and April. So what's what is this all yeah, about? Yeah, um, one of our volunteers, uh, her name is Hannah Walker. She is a um, an, an art student at uh, at Sage, and she organized this. This is um, both uh, students and graduates who work in the art field, uh, and uh, from Russell Sage. Uh, yeah. Um, yep. Okay. And sh uh, they have uh, they're doing a series of exhibits. You know, we had one in March. We're actually this week. Um, this Friday, uh, for April, April 2nd, I think. It, we're doing First Friday that day, too. And then May, the first Friday in May, we'll also be doing it where we're open for free, along with a lot of the other galleries in Albany, to come and take a look at, uh, at the exhibit. OK. Oh, yeah, I should say we're filming this on March, like 20, what's today, 27th, 30th, 28th? I think. Yeah. So actually, it, this, this will be on in April. So actually, your April. Is, is going to be one of these. Um, so we, what each one is um, different artwork by different different people, and it'll it'll change. The April one is one. It'll change in May. Correct. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it'll be open the whole month, so people would just have to kind of let us know they're coming. But certainly they can come and take a look. At so the again, exhibit. is it like the tours? You can just show up Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and if you want to come at other times, you can call first. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and what kind of art is it? Is it just all kinds of? It, it depends. Uh, this, uh, in March, it was a lot of photography. This time, uh, it's a lot of uh, paintings is what I, I noticed when she was setting it up. For it's April. Just about Do you that. know anything I'm about the May I'm not sure what May okay. it's going to be. Yet. So that cha that'll, be, um, that'll change every month. Mm -hmm. um, now, we have two events coming up that I'm going to start with the kids one because okay. you told me something about the other one that mm -hmm. would be better if I did that one second. This is um, July 12th through July 16th. It's going to be the 10th year, 10th year in a row they've done this. It's called Archaeology Summer Camp for Kids. Now, is this like fifth and sixth graders? Yep, kids going into fifth and sixth grade, that's who it's open to. And um, this is sponsored by you guys, I guess? And yes. What's this, the HeartGen, HeartGen Archaeology Associates? So tell us what um, this is all about. It must be successful if you've done it for 10 years. Yeah, um, this is something where um, generally um, the, you know, it's run by professional archaeologists, and um, they teach the kids a little bit about the history of the place first, and then also some of the you know, uh, techniques that they use in archaeology. And then they go out and actually do a dig. Do a dig, right on the grounds. Of yes, um, the and they find all different kinds of artifacts that they end up displaying at the end of the week. Um, and it's funny because you know some of the kids will come and they're, they're like, oh, I don't really want to be here. Yeah. And then by the end of the week, they all want to be archaeologists because they have such well, a great time. But if you've been doing it for 10 years, is there mm -hmm. still stuff to find on the they ground. Do, they do different portions of the ground. You know, we're um, working on perhaps doing it up at the Stephen and Harriet Myers residence, which was uh, a stop on the Underground Railroad. That's like a block or two away? Yep, okay. yep, on Livingston Ave. So um, that's something that we're looking at doing, um, perhaps. Um, and you're saying the kids yeah. sort of, you're saying they really get into this here. They do. And yep. the teachers or the people who run it, they're professional archaeologists? Yes, they and are. Are they from mm -hmm. what local They're from colleges? Harkin, yep. Okay, is that is that a local? Um, it it is an archaeological. All right, firm. so what they, mm -hmm. I guess you could say what they show them the tools and the, what what are the, what are the kinds of things would they still find two hundred years later on the on it the ground? It depends. Grounds? They find <laughs> a lot of broken pottery. Yeah. Um, they find shells sometimes, you know, that have been discarded. But you know, sometimes they find things like buttons or shoes oh, yeah. or something like that. So. Uh, you know, a lot of the times they've done the dig over where our old barn was, so they'll find like, you know, really old nails and okay. um, things like that. So. Do they, like, this is your tenth year? Does it? Do you do? Do they do a different spot each year? They, they do. They, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So well, that's that's kind of interesting. I know last year they were um, digging where they think the you know the privy was, or just yeah. all the <laughs> garbage and everything was thrown into it. So they did find a lot of interest. So has there been in the ten years of this? What's been like? Uh, 
is the biggest fine? Has there been any? Um, well, I haven't been here for the whole ten years, but oh, okay. I did see, you know, an old button that was, you know, found, you know, from probably the um, late eighteenth century. Okay. That was kind of interesting. And uh, so these are this is for fifth and sixth graders, mm -hmm. and you're saying that. Can kids just sign up? You say you have some scholarships? How, we do. Um, what we do is, you know, just to cover the cost of the camp, because mm -hmm. although Hartkin cuts us a huge break, we still have to cover some of their yeah. costs. Um, we charge, we're charging $350 a student, um, but we are uh, offering scholarships. So if you um, and qualify, it's for a whole week, though. It's for, it is for okay. a whole week, yep. So if you qualify for a scholarship, yeah. you know, we, we usually try and offer about five okay. or six scholarships. Um, we, you know, generally start out with the Arbor Hill neighborhood just because it's mm -hmm. right where we are. But um, if for some reason we didn't get enough kids from there, then we would branch out to other. Now, is there a reason why, why fifth and sixth grade? Is there any reason why? You know, I, I'm not really <laughs> sure. I think they just kind of determined that that would be the, um, you know, age. it's mature enough, but um, you they know, might really they're sort of still get into, younger. Get into yeah. So this has been so successful. Again, this is the 10th year for the archaeology summer camp. This has been so successful that you were telling me before we started mm -hmm. that this year you're having the first, the first annual, I guess. Maybe this will be the first of many. Mm -hmm. You're going to now do this for adults. So tell us how this came about. Sure. <laughs> um, we have three archaeologists that are on our board of trustees. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of had the, the resources there. And uh, one of them, uh, our actual, our president, Matt Kirk, had offered to organize this weekend archaeology camp that's geared towards adults. Um, I think the cutoff age we had is 15 and up. And they would come for both the Saturday and Sunday, May 15th and 16th. And the portion of the grounds that we chose to actually uh, excavate, uh, there's uh, the, the uh, burial ground that no long, we don't think anyone's buried there anymore. They were all moved to Albany Rural Cemetery many years ago, but there was a tomb on the grounds at one point. There was um, a little cemetery, you mean? Yeah, just a tomb. It was a big marble tomb, from what I understand. Um, one grave or several? Several. Oh, okay. In fact, at one point, even General Schuyler, I guess, was buried oh, okay. there as well. So um, they just want to see if they can find the foundations of this tomb and see if they can determine anything from but what you were, you were saying something before about... Mm -hmm. Some of the adults were saying, after seeing the kids do this for many years, like, this looks like fun. Yeah, uh, have... yeah a lot of, uh, of the adults that are you know, involved at the mansion said, boy, I wish I could do archaeology camp. So that was really the impetus for it. So this, and this is open for adults who might want to learn some of the what, basic techniques of archaeology. Mm -hmm. And um, that's May 15th and 16th, mm -hmm. and for ages 15 and up. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's um, the same group. Hart, what, how do you say it? Hartgen? Hartgen. Hartgen Archaeology Associates. Mm -hmm. And that, if you're a member, it costs $75. If you're not a member, it's $85. But you're, um, you're, it's limited to 20 people. And then I guess you can learn all about um, archaeology. Well, that sounds like be very interesting. Now, let's see. What else do we have here? We have... The annual, you have here the annual meeting, but is that is that something open to the public or? It well, it's for members. Um, all our members are invited. Certainly, everyone's welcome to uh, join our organization. We're always looking for new members. Um, but uh, this particular, usually we do it at the Tenbrook Mansion, and we thought we'd change this year, so we're actually going to hold it at the University Club, and we're going to have a reception afterwards. So. University Club? Okay. Yeah. So that would be June 9th at 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. Now, you give tours. Mm -hmm. um, what it, Tell us about what are some of the things that people really like about the ten. I mean, these pictures are beautiful and the mm -hmm. rooms. What do people really? What can you say that people really like about the mansion, or they um, find really most yeah, interesting? Yeah, well, the Tenbrook Mansion, as I said, it was built in 1798, um, but there have been a lot of changes through the years. You know, it was built in the federal style, but one of the owners had added a lot of Greek revival mm -hmm. elements, so it's kind of. Uh, eclectic in that respect where you know different families have lived there so there's they've all put their imprint on you it. You sort of can tell where the other parts were sort of I don't want to say they were cobbled on but you can it's a different style on the yeah like for instance um the Alcott's added bathrooms in 1887 okay. so that we've got these you know some of the first indoor bathrooms in the area okay. um, there and of course the Alcott's were very wealthy so it's all marble and, okay. and paneled wood it's they're beautiful people love to see those bathrooms because nothing's really been changed to them they, they look the way they did you know a hundred years or more ago um, another interesting thing is our wine cellar um, the Alcott family you know uh, were great connoisseurs of wine mm -hmm. and um, 
the wine cellar had actually been closed off and kind of forgotten about, you know, probably around Prohibition time, and it was rediscovered by our organization in the 1970s with all this valuable wine in it. And it was at a time when there were a lot of structural problems with the mansion, a lot of aesthetic problems. Mm -hmm. So they took this wine, they auctioned it off, and all that money went back into the mansion to restore it. Wait, and in other words, the wine was closed off from, let's say, the 20s until the 70s? Yeah. Wow. So uh, it was pretty valuable by the time it was Did, rediscovered. You know how much money they made? Do you remember? It was from from what I've seen. Uh, you know, it was close to uh, you know seventy five thousand, hundred thousand dollars that all really? went back into and, the mansion. Well, yeah. How much wine was there? <laughs> I guess it was a lot. You know, there was a and no one, all those years, no one knew it was down there. Wow, that's I've heard conflicting reports. There might have been people that right. might have known it was there. Okay. But, well, mm -hmm. geez, if you if you're going to have archaeology camp to ex excavate excavate the wine cellar, I think I'll come down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. Um, now, the, the mansion can be used, people can rent the mansion for events, receptions, mm -hmm. weddings. Why don't you tell us um, a little bit about that and how often how often is it is that done? Yeah, um, actually, we would we would love to have more people rent it. And, um, it's it's pretty reasonable. We charge uh, at the moment five hundred dollars for the you know minimum of three hours, and then an additional hundred dollars after that. So it's pretty reasonable. Our gardens are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, they're tended by master gardeners from the Cornell Cooperative Extension, all volunteer. I think they put in over a thousand volunteer hours last year. And um, so a lot of people choose to have their wedding out in the gardens. Okay. And, well, if um, you people, if you go to the website and look, there's there's, very, there's really good pictures of um, of the gardens. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm sorry, you were saying people have their weddings. Yeah, I mean uh, they do weddings, showers, anniversary parties, all kinds of events. Um, and you you know you can use both the the inside of the house and the outside. Oh, okay. Um, you know we we can move the furniture out of the way so you can set up tables and have um, different things inside as well. Oh, okay. Now, how many events a year? Do you, do you uh, it that? depends. Between six and ten, usually. Okay. But, uh, so you'd like to get some more in there? Sure, definitely. All right. Um, let's see. Now you're down on, is it, what's the name of the street again? We're located on 9 Tenbrook Place. So we're about a block up from the Palace Theater yeah, right. and a couple of blocks so over. You, if, you, mm -hmm. if you go up from the Palace and take a right, it's right down there. Yep. And the I know road. a lot of people worry about parking, but we do have a parking lot on site, so okay. that's not an issue. Mm -hmm. now, I was reading on the, I was reading on the um, website about your place, the hill that the mansion's on. That, that is actually Arbor Hill? Yeah, yep. Okay, I didn't. Uh, that was with the Alcott named there. there. You know, when Abraham Tenbrook lived there, he called it Prospect because he had a yeah. beautiful view to the Hudson River. When the Alcotts lived there, they named it Arbor Hill. So that's Hill. the hill that is Arbor Hill. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and um, what else was I going to say? It's um, Back then, though, that was called Water, that part of Albany, which is now Albany, was Water Valley. Is that true? When the house was first built, it was outside the city limits. I guess Clinton Avenue was considered the city limit, oh, okay. so it was pretty much countryside, and it was considered part of Water Valley. And then uh, that area started to really develop about 1825 or so when the Erie Canal finally was okay. in operation. Mm -hmm. Right. So, well, let me just sum up here a little bit. Um, you can go down to the Tenbrook Mansion starting May 2nd for tours, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sundays, but you can go um, other times if you call first, and you know the website will be on the screen here. You can call up and make, a, make an appointment and get a tour, and if you go to the website, there's a lot of pictures that would pique your interest. Now, what have I forgot? Have I forgotten anything of some upcoming events for this spring and summer? Um, I don't think so. We're working on scheduling some summer concerts and uh, garden talks and teas. So um, that's usually what we do in the summer. And uh, we're a little bit behind on our, our planning, but that should. Um, oh, so you have you year. have musical events down there too? We do. All right. mm -hmm. Like on um, summer evenings and. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. And what's the what's the. Th what is the tea? What's that? We, um, we do a, uh, usually a series of talks in the summertime, um, usually during the week where people come in, they, they hear you know an interesting lecture, and then they get a nice tea afterwards, oh, okay. uh, which uh, our volunteer that's in charge of the spread is an amazing cook, so okay. it's worth it. Well, I saw on the website that you do occasionally have talks by um, what historians or archaeologists, mm -hmm. and I don't see any coming up, but... Um, and people can come down and, and do that well. So if you're interested in history, there's a lot going on down at the Tenbrook Mansion. I'll just say May 2nd is the big day, which is a Sunday. All kinds of events going on, free tours, music, um, reenactors, vendors. So that, that'll be the big day is May 2nd. And Murder Mystery Night, 
on April 17th, and then archaeology camp for kids, July 12th through 16th, and archaeology camp for adults, May 15th and 16th. I just gave everything out of, out of chronological order. <laughs> All this is on the website. So, Wendy Birch, thank you for coming down and thank telling us about the uh, Pembroke again. Mansion. Thank you very much. Well, that's it for getting to know you, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>